We're going to take another quick walkabout in the Laney Welding Lab. So for starters, you're going to come in. This may change. What you see here with the lockers may change. From what I understand, these lockers in the middle will be going down all the way to the very end of the next back door. This is the tool room, which uh, probably won't be manned or won't have any personnel in it. So here's the deal. Here's some welding rods. Okay, we'll have them out here uh, for you uh, to pick from. Then over here, you're going to cut your plates. Okay, there's the welding. Here's the torch right here. This is a cutting torch, right? All right, so you're going to learn how to set up the cutting torch using natural gas. This is a natural gas compressor. It has to be on. And here's some gauges. You'll, we'll go over that so you can uh, understand how to make. I'll demo this probably the first day of class unless we have to do some other kind of orientation or safety thing or COVID thing or whatever. So you'll cut your plate. Basically the rule is you cut your plates and you get them ready and then you bring them into a grinding, uh, well you might do a little grinding on the pedestal grinder. But you bring them into your welding booth. This is booth number 25 for instance. See there's a number on it. Okay, so there's a light switch and you turn the light on. All right, this is the welding machine. This, this particular uh, cubicle has a welding machine and a wire feed so it does MIG, which is this. Okay, so this will be one of the first things that ECT students learn is how to do this. This is real easy welding. It's a hot metal point and shoot glue gun. Okay, this is the electrode holder for stick welders in the 211 class. All right, so basically, real quick, this is going to be a Miller XMT 350. Take notes on your settings. Open that lid and, well, first of all, turn the welding machine on. All right, now it takes a second for it to boot up. All right, this was set on TIG for some reason, so you're going to want to go to stick. See there? Stick welding. Alright. Or oh, if you're going to do MIG, you're going to have it here. Okay, so that these things sense that it's in MIG and uh, allows you to pull the trigger, have the solenoids for the gas and the wire feeder to, uh, to produce a, a MIG weld. We'll talk about all this. Alright, so this is an industrial machine now. This is not the you get at Home Depot. So you're going to be learning the industrial way. All right, so you see there's these connections here. All right, what's this go to? You have to troubleshoot this stuff now. If you don't know what's going on, you have to figure it out. So this is the electrode holder. All right, so what polarity? Huh? For stick welding? Generally, it's reverse electrode positive. So you want the reverse polarity, and this don't just leave this in loose. This needs to be kind of tight. So in other words, it's not squirrely, jiggly like right there. See that's a little jiggly. See right there, it's a little jiggly. Make sure that's snug. Not don't kill it. And don't put a wrench on it or nothing. Just hand tight. All right. So what's the next thing you need? You need to have a ground. Or a work cable. So that, where's this go? This goes around here and goes back up. Well, that goes to the wire feeder. So don't use that one. So it must be this other one. Sure enough, see, it says DND means ground. So this goes over there and look where it hooks up to. It hooks up down there. Makes it ground to this work table. Okay? So these things are set up to where you, uh, Put a pipe in here, and we'll show you that. But you tighten up that that holder, and you make your. That's where you mount your your coupon. All right. So here, 
is the ground. And we're gonna put it in right here. See the little see the little tit on it? It corresponds with that tit right there. See how that works? Alright. Now these things, these are uh, DIN connectors, or they see that it doesn't really want to tighten. So you have to make sure it's snug. Anyway, okay, so there's that. So we're set up on stick. And how many amps? 120. Okay, so that's pretty good for for doing a low hydrogen, the 7018 rod. But if you were doing the 6010 rod, you'd probably kick it down to somewhere around in the 90. Okay, so here's the deal. You need to experiment with the heat ranges, okay? So depends on the type of material, the size of the material, what position you're working in, what joint you're working. So there's a whole lot of variables. So you got to start taking notes. What did I do to make a good looking weld at that temperature uh, on that piece of plate? Okay, if it's a thin plate, it may be a little less temperature. If it's a thick plate, you might kick it up. If it's in the downhand position, you might burn it up really hotter. If it's going vertical up, that might be a little bit lower. So you've got to start figuring out all your temperature settings. All right, so if you're doing MIG work, all right, so back here is the gas settings. Right now we're set on CO2, okay? Down below is argon, mix one, mix two, just, you know, basically you can come in and start working with it. Uh, here's a uh, flow meter, uh, could be just already set up for you, but you're going to want to know and understand the cubic feet per minute, that's the flow of the gas that comes from the tanks which are, by the way, outside. And uh, there's a whole video on those. And then uh, comes in through here and goes up to the back of the machine and then comes out through the torch. So we'll talk about this when we talk about MIG welding for, for the ECT people or the introductory people. So, so wow, okay. So we'll talk about these parts, okay? These contact tips, the nozzles. You can see that the gas comes out those little holes there. When you pull the trigger, the gas comes out, okay? There's an insulator that holds the nozzle on. I can only do this one-handed when you come into the lab. That's why we have labs, to show you this stuff in a lot faster time than I can do on this video. So this is the basic start of what you're going to be doing, what you can expect to do. When you leave here, we want to see this place all cleaned up. No slag, no dust. Oh, here, by the way, is the, uh, the vent hood. So you want to position this over the top. So when you're welding here, this, when you're welding right here, the smoke goes right up inside this vent hood. There's a... Uh, Way up there at the top, that knob that uh, tightens and loosens a, uh, a, a string, nylon string that's up inside this thing that allows you to manipulate this. Right now it's pretty tight. So it's, yeah, there it is. So we'll figure that out uh, and you'll find your position for setting this uh, vent. In because if you don't have the, say you've got this vent over there and you're welding over here, then the smoke goes up, fills this cavity here in this uh, booth, and you're going to have smoke all over the place. So make sure you, you uh, position this thing correctly so the smoke rises right up into there. Okay? It's a little difficult to show here on a video, but that's the gist of it. So make sure you clean up this place really good. Take all your rod stubs. Now, I'll tell you about rod stubs. You should collect them in a little can. And we'll talk about that later. Okay, that's it. That's nine minutes, almost ten minute video on this thing. So we're going to talk about grinding later.
you have a safety grinding, a, a grinder safety test that you have to do. So, all right, so that's it for right now.